In this problem, we're told a rotating wheel requires 3 seconds to rotate 37 revolutions. Its angular velocity at the end of the 3 second interval is 98 radians per second. What is the constant angular acceleration in radians per second squared of the wheel? So imagine this is our wheel right here, and so what do we know about it? So we know it's going to take 3 seconds from it to start whatever speed it starts at to rotate 37 revolutions, right? So it's going to go for 3 seconds, rotate 37 revolutions, right? And then after these 3 seconds, it's going to be going at 98 radians per second. Right, so we know the time interval is 3 seconds. We know the change in the angle theta right, is 37 revolutions, because that's how many times it's going to rotate around. And then we know the final angular velocity, which is 98 radians per second. Right? And so what we're trying to do is solve for the constant angular acceleration, which we call alpha. So we're trying to find alpha. Right? So how do we do that? So we solve these problems by using rotational kinematic equations, which are just like normal kinematic equations, just with rotational uh, kinematic variables. Okay? So the way we want to solve for it right, is if you look at the kinematic equations, there's none that actually go ahead and solve for uh, uh, alpha or a, right? So in the normal kinematic equations, it's a, right? But for this case, it's alpha. None of them actually are able to solve for alpha given these three variables. So what we have to do first is actually go ahead and solve for omega 0 or the initial angular velocity if we want to be able to solve for alpha, right? So the first thing we have to do is find omega 0, and then we'll be able to solve for it, right? So Let's go ahead and solve for this first. So the formula that we can use, right? You should know this formula, which is basically delta x is equal to v plus v sub zero over two times t. This is just the normal kinematic version, but the rotational kinematic version is the change in theta is equal to omega plus omega zero over two times t, right? You just replace the normal kinematic variables with rotational ones. Okay, so what we wanna do is just plug in our numbers and so we can solve for omega zero, that'll allow us to solve for alpha. So the change in theta, so keep in mind when we do this, this needs to be in radians, because this is in radians per second, and this is in seconds. So converting this to radians, 37 revolutions, we know that one revolution is the same as two pi radians, right? And since that's the case, that'll cancel the revolutions, and then you just multiply 37 times two pi, and it's going to be in radians. So two pi times 37 is just, it's just going to be uh, 74, right? So 74 pi radians. So just keep that in mind what this is. So this is equal to 74 pi radians. So now we can actually plug it in. So 74 pi is equal to omega, which is 98 radians per second, plus omega 0, which is what we're solving for, over 2 multiplied by the time. How long does this take? 3 seconds. So let's just go ahead and solve for omega. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. 74 pi. So if you go ahead and do that, 74 pi right, and then you divide by 3, sorry about that, you'll get uh, 77.4926, and so on. I'm going to use the exact version of my calculator when I solve this, so just keep that in mind if my number's a bit different than yours. Then we can multiply both sides by 2, so multiply your number by 2, right, and then just minus 28 from, the, or minus 98 from that number. So minus 154.9852, so it's equal to 98 plus omega 0, minus 98, Right, so minus 98 from your number, and you're basically going to get omega 0 is equal to 56.98. I'm going to round to 57, so 57, and then it's going to be in radians per second. So now we have omega 0. Let's write that right here. So 57, I'm going to use the more rounded version. You can use the exact version if you'd like. It's just going to be a little bit different, but we're going to round anyway, so it won't make a difference. So 57 radians per second, that's going to be omega 0, and now we can solve for alpha. So the equation, you can choose any of them, right? So uh, we know v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. This is the one I'm going to use, right? Which is just omega equals omega 0 plus alpha times t, right? Just replace them with their angular counterparts. And then so we can just plug in, right? So omega, which is 98, is equal to omega 0, which is 57, plus alpha multiplied by t, which is 3. So minus 57 from both, 98 minus 57 right, and then divide by 3. So this is 41 equals alpha times 3, divide by 3, 41 divided by 3. If you go ahead and do that, you'll get equals 13.66666 and so on. I'm just going to round to 13.7. So 13.7, and then it's going to be in radians per second squared, right, because this was in radians per second, and we're dividing by seconds. So 13.7 radians per second squared, that's going to be the constant angular acceleration of the wheel, right? So 13.7 radians per second squared, that's going to be your answer. 
uh, to this problem. And so, yeah, hopefully you found this useful.